Hello everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today we have the European Historical Rules event for you. It should be a good one. We have our first map here, Roulette Lane. You're getting an overview of that map. It's a map we've seen a little more, unlike Eastwoods, which we haven't seen that much, which as you can see, it's a woods. What a shock there. So with that being said, our teams for today. On the Union, we have the 4th New Jersey, 2nd U.S., Rebel 2nd Corps, 13th Georgia, 24th Georgia, 1st Virginia Cavalry, and the Irish Volunteer Brigade. Whereas on the Confederacy, we have the Jenkins Brigade, the Jefferson Davis Legion, the 20th Georgia and Toombs Brigade. We have the Lee's French Legion, I-Corps, which consists of the Anderson's Brigade and the Walker's Division. We have the Davis Brigade and the Shenandoah Valley Regulars. And with that being said, I hope you enjoy this event. Here we are with Roulette Lane. We've seen historically that the CSA have wiped the Union on this map within the first couple charges and have won this map decisively, but we'll see if that changes today. Your team for today is myself as Guardian Eagle with our special guest, Corded. How are you doing, Corded? I'm doing good. That's good to hear. So, those of you who don't know, historical rules, they start off at 40 minutes, which is why we're starting at the 41-minute mark. This is more of a line battle type of events you need to stay in lines one or double rank you can't go in buildings uh, try to charge in formation if possible so this is different than the typical event that we see here on this channel um, but in terms of the CSA attack corded is a CSA player um, what does the CSA usually try to do to win these battles on roulette lane well uh, it might be a little different since the different rules but um, typically, if CSA likes to go around their left side, go past that big brown barn. And then after that, it kind of splits up to, for different people. Either they'll push everyone to the top of the hill, or they'll, or, they'll, or they'll split up and have one group go toward the wall, and the rest go to the top of the hill. That's usually how I see it. Yeah, historically, that is what I've seen as well with CSA. USA, it's blatantly obvious. They just have to defend these positions. If they, if the CSA break them in any position, it's usually a done deal for the Union because this is a pretty CSA biased map on a smaller pop server. And as you can see, it's a 78v70 in favor of the Union. But 150 man server is still kind of tiny, especially in modern day. So right now we have Rebel 2nd Corps. Left, taking left, shots left. here at the confederates the that are part. spawning in uh i'm intrigued to see how long they will stay there but in terms of the rest of the union defense up on the wall here we have the second u.s in the yeah, corner position the, west. the fourth new jersey west, 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 west. up okay. above them uh, is the ivb mind. and then finally on top is the 13th and the 24th where is the first VA cab i must have missed them but anyways let's check up what's going on on this left side yeah, with the rebel second core really just point blank shots union falling back after taking a decent amount of casualties not too surprising there union does have some artillery though a uh, decent amount of guys and here is the first va cav probably to protect the artillery here Good. Looks like Union's got about a good 10 guys on artillery. Hopefully they can make use of this 10-man artillery group. We That's good. They got about four guns running. It's a nice distribution. Yeah, it's about a little over two men per gun. It's better than three men per gun. So. Uh, looks like it's, they got seven and eight. Said they had uh, how many guys on artillery? Sorry. Seven. Oh, yeah, seven. I overshot. So, the I Corps and 10th LA are holding up on the corner position on that barn. To their right, hiding themselves from the Union is the Jenkins Brigade. And then going into the woods right now is the Tombs Brigade, 20th Georgia. I don't think the 7th South Carolina is here as of yet. And then the Confederate force that is over here is the Davis Brigade pushing on the far right. I think Confederate, so, right, they, they don't have a steam chat, so they need to send runners in game. So we've seen them do this the past two times, but they got into position and then waited till a certain time marker and then charge. So I am intrigued to see when that mobile will be and if they do that. 
So, Jenkins Brigade is pushing more forward here. Looks like they're just taking some volley shots at the Union here. Getting a couple kills, but a lot of those shots going over. Union counter volleying, but that missed a lot because Confederates Jenkins Brigade moving back very, very quickly. Let's check out what's going on on the right side here for the CSA. Davis Brigade <laughs> appears to just be taking their independent fire with some Shenandoah Valley and regulars mixed with them. So I'm intrigued to see where the Confederate will charge. I'm guessing they're going to charge on all three fronts, the uh, center, right, and left. It seems the center will be the bigger charge of the three. First VA Cav is holding awfully far back. Would you rather play as a rifleman or an arty crewman right now? It appears they're just trying to defend the artillery in case the Confederates think of anything. Union artillery, it, what appears to be overshooting. Even then, it's so hard to hit the Confederates from that position. Now it's just going to be a matter of time when the CSA is in charge. It might be yeah. at 35. It seems like they're grouping up behind the barn. It is. I, I want, maybe they were trying to put their guys in the forest to, like, bait the Union into pulling up to the top of the hill a little more. But I don't know why they put their guys in the woods. But regardless, though, they're met up. I'm guessing they would charge now. Which it appears they are. I'm intrigued to see if the group at the house will charge. They normally do. Maybe they're just waiting for their friendlies. I think Jenkins' brigade is in the front here. It goes all the way to Jenkins' brigade getting point leg shots. We could see the first VA Cav and another Union regiment pulling down, engaging here with the Confederates. Uh, we see Fort New Jersey on the wall, IVB in as well. First VA Cav holding in the back. Um, that group on the cabin did not charge. We can now see Toombs Brigade is engaging. LFL mostly staying back, taking shots now, charging in. Second U.S. moving in to reinforce. But it looks like Union's going to be able to defend this charge. A lot of Confederates not charging in, though. Possibly just trying to hold that position so they can keep getting spawns in. As you can see, Union's getting easy shots on them. Yeah, 13th Georgia coming around from the top hill. Flank the Confederates that are coming out of the barn. They have a good position. Confederates aren't going to charge at them. This melee is still going on. Union needs to push the Confederates completely off because they're going to get respawns with that flag. I mean, this is so weird to see. I don't know why the uh, Confederates aren't charging, why they're getting reloads. That artillery shot got close but missed everybody. 13th after hitting some good shots are now charging in. Coalition between 13th and 24th. Saw they were better. 13th is charging right into the middle of the, this mixed Confederate force. 4th New Jersey is not charging in to assist the 13th, but 13th basically clears out this Confederate force. If the um, Davis Brigade charged, they could have possibly won the Stonewall, but it looks like they're just distracting the Union main spawns right now. We'll probably see another charge at 30. Corded, do you have any thoughts about that charge? How it went? Any suggestions? Um, just the groups in the back charged pretty late, in my opinion. And they didn't they didn't charge into the unit. They kind of just charged up to them. And the unit has that stone wall, so they they had that advantage. To, you know, they had that cover to load behind that the CSA didn't. That is a very good point. So, of course, it's always dangerous uh, trying to take that corner with all those artillery guns looking at you. So, having at least someone going to the top of the hill and distracting their artillery is usually a good idea. 
I would agree that would make sense. However, I am um, with a lower. See, the thing is, though, it's a lower pop server. I don't know how much of a good idea it is to split up your guys, but. I don't know how many guys you would need to send up to really distract the Union, but regardless, you could see a USA group uh, pushing in to the Davis Brigade there. Um, they pushed off the Davis Brigade, so now Confederates are going to be bunching up all on this barn here. Very, very interesting Union. Appears to be returning their positions. Enemy north northeast. Fourth New Jersey coming up onto the straight fence. It looks like they are firing at those rebels in the house. I do not know why they're up on that fence though. Yeah, that's an easy spot for artillery. Just yep. right in front of the house in that corner. So, let's see here. So, we could see a small Confederate force distracting the uh, Rebel 2nd Corps and 2nd U.S. The uh, JDL, Jefferson Davis Legion, is distracting here. But these two guys are going to charge them out. And I, I think the Confederates are going to charge in another 10 seconds. Uh, see a couple guys going out to get their flag. Are you able to get it? And now the Confederates are charging in, so it looks like they're charging in every five minutes, but this charge is still spread out. Jenkins Brigade is going to be the first to engage. So the second U.S. and Rebel Second Corps are going to be able to move over after wiping the JDL. Uh, we could see IVB and 13th are now repositioning themselves on the top of the hill to move down to help. 10th LA slamming into the snake fence. They're not going for the stone wall. Union hitting engaged. I think that is a good tactical decision to put a, put a nice large group on that snake fence because you are getting around that stone wall that likes to use. I don't know why the second US charged in. I don't know why they, um, they didn't hold back on the snake fence or stone wall they just charge right down the road now we can see 13th i think this is 13th might be ivv but probably 13th yep the 13th is charging down here but now they're way outnumbered and they're going to cause their team to get skirmishing and out of lines the fetter's actually hitting engaged though but these out of liners here for the union are going to be devastating you can see confederate out of line way up top goes down that's a sad story. Um, but Confederates are able to secure this corner. And unless Union thwarts this Confederate position quickly, um, I doubt Union is going to be able to come back and win this. You saw that artillery shot hit by them, and it didn't look like it killed anybody. Uh, did you see that corded through your view, that artillery shot? I didn't see it. Oh. Uh, yeah, it looked like it didn't hit anybody, but... I might have been wrong. I didn't see the whole picture, but I'm surprised Confederates aren't moving in. Maybe they're trying to get a more of a foothold, get more reinforcements, but we do have a Union group really far out. Uh, Rebel Second Corps returning to where they were at the beginning. It looks like they're just taking shots at the Confederate reinforcements and now repositioning themselves. Do you see uh, LFL, at least French Legion, going behind the barn? I don't I don't agree with that. You know, now you're there. just, now you're just waiting for people to. You're putting yourself at a distance, from helping your friends out. That is true. Thankful for them though. Union's not really being aggressive yet. You can see Union artillery was starting to deal some damage. They hit a shot. I don't know how many kills, but there was blood. Um, they they need to send a unit to distract that artillery. I see Jenkins Brigade is going up. Looks like they're going to do just that. The Union infantry Jenkins is going to, have, is going to outnumber them spread coming out, through the artillery. Or to try and take that top of the hill and have an easier time trying to dislodge the CSA. So, it looks like Union is just going to position themselves in the caisson. Confederates are going to respond by 
it's just gonna be a type of fire the lore. Union position themselves around this house. You can't go in the house, but they're around the house. Um, looks like the second US is doing some rising volleys using the house as cover. Uh, the point is being lost because, for those of you who don't know, I'm being on the road right there is capturing the point. On top of that, being on the fence, I think, right here is also capping the point, which is very weird to see. Um, but Union could have just held there, recapped the point. Uh, from that distance and not even have to really charge at the Confederates. Of course, Confederates will still be in this position, but at least you'd be um, moving the clock down. So, we are six of the way through the counterattack, and Union is just getting positions there and doing anything. Union artillery. Probably the first time I've seen the Confederates take that foothold and not charge artillery. Yeah, it's usually something you want to take out pretty quickly. Hey, you know, I hope the artillery is loading canister too. Let's see what uh, comrade here from the IVB is shooting when he shoots. That shot didn't look like canister, I don't think. I think that was shell. Yeah. It was high. That IVB shot was way over. I, I hope that was. They need to start loading canister, if not for hitting suppression sake. The uh, 24th and 1st oh, no. VA Cav is fucking, is, is over still alive? No are positioning themselves on the top of this hill. They come over and Jenkins' brigade falls back. Because of that, the rest of the Union is now positioning themselves on the snake fence here. So very, very interesting. Confederates just reforming here. On the Stonewall, Union's beginning to pinch the Confederates here. Regardless of where the Confederates go, they will be shot at from all directions. We do see the um, least French Legion, not on point, but on the Stonewall, engaging with the guys on the top of the hill. Yeah, so if I was CC, I would try and get least French Legion and Toons Brigade that's behind the barn right now. Maybe someone else from the stone wall to push the top of the hill so you're not getting in a crossfire. Now they're getting reinforced from the top with those two flags that they have. Yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, on top of that, it, that would drive everyone's ticket downs or tickets down as well, which is what you're trying to do with this counterattack. So, but even then, yeah. I hope they start shooting canister. Mr. Comrade, is that canister? <laughs> I hope it is. You see Jenkins Brigade is trying to push up the hill just a little slowly. They, I don't know if they know they're outnumbered. They're getting mighty close. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what they're doing by that. Uh, you, 24th is now charging out. What the heck are we watching? <laughs> you do see a uh, Rapple Second Corps going across the orchard, getting behind the East French Legion. That's very risky. You can see that Confederate force is also following them. So this Union group's about to be pinched, but not a bad idea. That that one shot just killed that guy. Um, <laughs> yep, now, now they know. Now they know. They gotta run. Yeah, they do. They can't take too many cat, or rather, their casualties don't matter. But they need to avoid dropping the CSA so many tickets. That was a good volley by the CSA. I got three kills there. Jenkins Brigade fell back. And now Louis French Legion is moving over to support that corner position. Artillery, canister, when will it be? Um... That would be a question I have. But 13th is now charging into the Confederates. Uh, they are charging in by themselves. I See, like... IV, sorry? I would be in some more of the 4th New Jersey are charging the wall. So now they're not, they're not going in alone. Okay, there we go. I don't know why the Confederates are pulling back. They should have held that stone wall and engaged. Mm -hmm. uh, or at least go on that snake fence. The very most thing that they don't want to do is to separate themselves from the Union. Because they, because now you can see that they're 
There's a clear segment between them and the Union, so that's, a, that's an easy shot for artillery. Yeah, I didn't even big, think of that. But yeah. clear on this map. Good fighters need the mass charge because Union's going to go back to engage once they recap here, and now they are. Uh, I don't know why they waited. Maybe it's so they could try to get this flank instead of fighting across the stone wall. They're now just fighting across the flank fence. Both sides not sure. Actually, the Confederates are hopping over. I think the Union should be able to hold this. I think they should be able to as well. I think CSA might be stacking Bucking Ball. That would be a good thing for them to do. If Confederates were going to let the Union recap, they should have waited till after they recapped, and then they should have charged. Mm -hmm. um, so that they could once they recap they could deal a lot more damage and make the differential even bigger both sides didn't take losses at the same time um union sweeping in and finishing off those confederates union shouldn't run off too far though because if they do they'll start getting out of lines uh, which will hurt their cause but so Union survives, but 27 minute taking losses, not very good for their cause. We do have Confederates up here on the right. This Rebel Second Corps, actually it's First VA Cab and Rebel Second Corps, engaging with the Tombs Brigade in a double rank here. Taking shots at Union. I don't... Yeah, so Rebel Second Corps and First VA Calf pulled off completely. So, Corder, do you think CSA should sit back, shoot them down, or should they um, stay aggressive like they have been? Um, I think they could shoot them down. They definitely have enough time to. Uh, if I was 10th uh, LA right here, I would move back because. Union's positioned in a way that they can shoot behind that stone wall. They definitely, they definitely need to move back to the other one. And they're beginning to do that right now. So. You could also take a push up to the top of the hill, but now there's no Union on top of it. So once they get their reinforcements from main spawn, then they can make a decision about that. Yeah, for sure. You can, um... Yeah, if anything, it would, both sides would be reaching that top of the hill. At the same time, you, a Union would probably get there a little before, but it'd be very, very close because no Union's up there, like you said. So, where's the Apes Brigade going? No, this is Shenandoah Rivalry and Tunes Brigade. Too close to the wall. Actually, we might be seeing that Union group that's moving across the middle here. Who is it? IVB. I, I would hope they would go back up to that wall. They're, bu they're bunching up behind the uh, barn again. I'll, act I'll, I'll go ask Victor something, but I'll still keep everything in order, okay? I see 13th Georgia go back to that, but I don't know where they are. Um. That's load, boys. That's load. Oh, it looks like they're at the corner. They are. So it looks like 4th New Jersey and 13th are holding that corner. Uh, I don't know where Preacher's guys are going. It looks like they're going back up to that corner position. Second U.S. and Rebel Second Corps are very, very far forward. Um, far forward in the sense that compared to the normal tradition of Union game plan. But they're now going across the orchard. I don't think they really need to go as far as they're going. No. no? I mean, at, at the, uh, the snake fence they were, they were able to shoot behind the barn where a lot of the CSA is forming up. I, yeah, I because attackers have more tickets. Information dots are a lot worse for the defenders and the attackers. Um, so you're draining tickets, and yeah, you're draining your team's tickets right now. Even if it's information, every ticket counts, especially on a CSA bias map like this with this server. Um, we're probably going to see a Confederate charge at 20 minutes. They keep going every five minutes, and since we missed the 25-minute mark. They will probably 
just go to 20. Let's see here. In terms of the Confederate forces up on this house here, we have the uh, Jefferson the Davis Legion. Uh, in front, Jenkins Brigade always been standing here with the Tombs Brigade behind with LFL behind and the Davis Brigade up against the wall. In terms of the Union defense, nobody's up on top of the hill. Uh, for the Union, we have 4th New Jersey, 13th and the 2nd U.S. holding on that corner with Rebel 2nd Corps moving through and doing those independent shots. On top of the hill, we have IVB, which is shifting over to that wall with 1st VA Cav by the cannons. Uh, Union should, I don't know how many cannons they have. They have six. Union should load all those cannons and put a man on a gun to fire when they do charge, which Confederates are now charging. Uh, earlier than expected, they're splitting up. As we can see, they are sending a small force up to the top, and that's causing the 4th New Jersey. I think that's the 4th. No, it's not. It's the 13th to pull off completely. That's huge. They do have two groups going up to the top. Just uh, another group came in late. The i Corps and DB. Yeah, and some from Tooth Brigade. Yeah, they're going very, very late. However, uh, those guys, Davis Brigade and Toons Brigade, could have come down to the bottom. Because look at the bottom of this corner now. Like, they completely distracted two Union forces. Fourth, the 13th Georgia, I should not have pulled off the stone wall there. I get they're trying to protect the top, but now they left their a smaller Union force against a larger Confederate force. And now Confederates are able to take the road and have free reign to that stone wall. And now the Union wiping that Confederate charge is moving down 13th and IVB. I don't know why the first VA Cav hasn't moved in yet. Um, maybe trying to protect oh. artillery, but if they don't win this charge, CSA is going to wipe Union artillery and the first VA Cav. Already is mostly quiet, and that shot is just behind the line that was already moving. So, he didn't hit anybody. JDL now here to reinforce. Confederates are going to win this. Um, Confederates should not cap. Unless Union hits breaking very shortly. Union artillery. They charge this group that's right in front of them, they might. Yeah, it'll be close. I don't think they should cap though. No. At this they point, they just charge. might be too late with the people that's on it. Yeah. Charge up the hill, go for their artillery. But it looks like they will cap the point. Alright, seven minutes. Taking losses, taking losses, cap is very, very risky. I got. Especially with how well they've been doing with the charges. I wonder if Union isn't shooting canister under that stone wall. Um, I don't. Does canister just explode right away when you shoot it, and then the pellets go out, or does it like one big thing and then explodes into a bunch of pellets and goes forward? Do you what know? you described as case, or at least what yeah. case is supposed to be, canister. Uh, yeah, there's only one explosion, and that's in the barrel. So after that, the pellets just go out. So I wonder if that's why they aren't using canister, is because um, with case, yeah, if they would have waited another minute, Union would have gone down the breaking. But if uh, Union uses case, they can maybe set the fuse right, explode it right on top of them, and get a lot of them. Um, maybe that's why they're not using canister. But I would use canister anyway. It's so such a cool thing. Wow. That destroyed that line. Whatever that was, it killed literally every person. What, artillery? Or... Yep, where you see that down CSA flag? Oh. oh, I missed it. I was focusing on the cabin here. There was a large Union force shooting Confederates. Confederates did adjust, but probably because of that artillery shot that you were just talking about, um, Confederates are pulling back. Union could win this very easily because they capped way too early. We're not way too early, a minute early, but every second counts in this game. 
Yeah, but this Union group at the top of the hill, they need to get some shots in. Yeah, Union needs to mass charge here at some point. It's going to be hard to coordinate because they're so split up, but they just need to go. Because what, Union's got about a good three and a half charges left in them. Maybe three. Yeah, I don't see them being able to get the CSA to last stand. Because they only have four and a half minutes. And they'll need to wipe the CSA like twice in order to get them there. Exactly. So... CSA are trying to prevent them from getting pincered from both sides, so the Jenkins Brigade, and actually, sorry. The least French Legion is moving up to the top of the hill. You know artillery are overshooting by a lot. You may have seen a flag troll. You can see a Union flag southeast, way out there. Confederates are breaking. To your right. Way out Holy field. crap! <laughs> yep. You weren't kidding. What the heck? <laughs> That's funny. I I I didn't think it would be that far, <laughs> but yeah, that's that's definitely a troll. A hundred percent. Do a minuscule amount of trolling. So three and a half minutes with the counterattack. Confederates are still holding. Union not charging. I again. I understand it's hard to communicate a charge, but you need to keep hammering yourself into the Confederates because you could knock them the last stand, uh, or you could retake the point. I don't think retaking the point is a valid idea at this point. Possibly. I could be trying to weaken. They might be trying to weaken the Union. I mean, the CSA just by shooting at them, just to see how far down they can get them, and then and then try and recap the point. Because right now, they're they're outnumbering the CSA, and it looks like that left Union group is charging in. Yeah. The only problem with shooting them down is they have three flags, and they could just keep spawning in men, but now they're charging in, they're going to recap the point. That'd be really funny if the Confederates hit last stand right here, but they won't, because we just, they just hit breaking. Point, you know? What would have been really inter interesting to see is the Union like, pushing toward the CSA spawn. Trying to shoot all the reinforcements they're getting in. Because you'll be getting skirmishing tickets and possibly some out lines as well. Because you've seen groups of five coming out. They're all skirmishing. Gotta have six to be information. When I first heard six, I thought that was way high. I, I never knew that. It's kind of crazy. So, Confederates rushing over to the barn again. I. I don't know if the Confederates are going to move in to try to... Actually, the Confederates should just hold back. Yeah, no. You don't want to cause your team to go into last stand trying to retake the point. Um, this is where I think Union should charge. Yeah. Because they can get their tickets back. Yeah, because Confederates, you can see, with all the flags, are so spread out right now. Um, not a terrible idea, but Union's going to go back to their positions... Point's going to be recapped, and whoever hits that last stage first is going to be huge. That was a artillery volley. There you go. That killed a decent amount. Oh, some CSA is already coming in to the point. Well, the Union just already that, off of it. That artillery shot by the Union was perfect timing if they were going to charge in like this. I don't know why... Nope. These Union guys on point, I'm surprised none of them died, but they would be out of line deaths, and that's going to be huge. I don't know why Union also pulled off the point completely with everybody. Yeah, they definitely need to keep some people on. Yeah. You definitely need to keep that stone wall. So, Confederates bunched up at that barn. You can see, though, there's still a decent amount of Confederates holding up in this orchard. Probably the JDL and DD. Nope, the uh, TV. You've got 24th and 13th Georgia it's pushing up into the barn. The first VA calves, which sides? Yep. Yeah, they did. Numbers are a lot more even, that's probably, yeah. 
So numbers are balanced. First GA cap switch sides. Union did charge out into this um, barn while I was looking at that, the 24th and the 13th here. They are not, taking some. Not damage. sure why they did that. Uh, were there any Confederates holding where they charged? Did you see any? There was a few in the stone wall, but the Union didn't charge in a way they could really hit them. Yeah. I just went up there and ran back. I'm going to do the pacer test today. Um, mm -hmm. You can see off to the far west, there is a Confederate group moving to really hit the Union on their flanks. Uh, who's moving out? It's the um, Davis Brigade. Very far Big right. Uh, towards the barn here, we have these French Legion. In front of them, we saw first VA Cav. <laughs> So, I don't know when we're going to see a charge. Uh, they charged at 23, maybe they'll charge at 18, or maybe they'll wait another couple minutes to knock in the last stand, shoot him down. There's a lot of skirmishing happening here at this barn. I think they need to charge Preacher's Group right there. They can get some easy tickets. Yeah, they can. <laughs> They're playing Ring Around the Posey right now. Back to the southwest. A lot of you see when CSA guy hiding in the house. You're not supposed to be able to do that. Oh, he got out. He came back out. Good man. <laughs> Potato soup killing him, getting a second kill when he goes down. Dang. Imagine if the triple kill happened. So, a charge happening here. Um, the Davis Brigade charge charging, but the Union held. Um... Maybe some miscommunication on when to charge because the guys at the barn did not charge in. No, it might not be a bad time for the Union to actually be aggressive because they've taken out two seasick groups. They outnumber them mostly on that barn. We get about 20 to 25 there. The Union mostly has all their, their people still up. CSA's lost a flag. It doesn't look like they have any flags up. The uh, CSA? It's not by the, by the player list. Yeah, well, they got one by the flag. The barn. Oh, okay. Hold up. Like all the people... I like how when people open the barn doors, it opens the whole thing. <laughs> Cholera. That's funny. So, 16 and a half minutes remaining here. Both sides... I'm kind of entrenched here. I think 15 minutes we're going to see a charge. My, I think Confederates are going to hit final push before Union hit the last. Yeah, with the pace they're going and the people they're sending out, they probably will. You can see uh, two people from Jefferson Davis uh, Legion just sitting in the orchard. They're both out of line tickets. Yeah, they are. I'm pretty Assuming. sure you can't do that. Think that as well. GDL is a small group. Um, I don't know how many they have. I think they have five on them. That might be you get first first VA calf from the come from the orchard. They only got five people. They're they're costing fifteen tickets when they die. I think. Probably will. I'll be honest no, with you. A couple of them are the first two that die will be in skirmishing. Creature runs back. Goblin runs back, and there's only three left. Those were two out of lines. So, well, yeah. there will be fifteen. If they all died, it'll be fifteen tickets. If there were five people. So there's three each. If my math is correct. The first two would be skirmishing, the last three would be out of line, right? No, uh, skirmishing is three people. <laughs> One and two is out of line. Second back on the fence. So second the US was able to hold off the first VA Cavin, right? As that ends, the Confederates are now beginning to charge on the point. Uh, very spread out again. You see guys in the back of the barn not charging in. Got it. Right, right. Here they come. But 
Oh, when Union artillery needs to start shooting, you should at least anticipate a charge at that that place, oh. and now it's gonna be at last stand. Both sides oh. hit their last stage at the same time. Um, that was a perfect time for the Union to hit last stand for the Confederates, because you can't respawn after the last stand hits. Um, so everyone that dies now cannot respawn. Confederates, final push, they have infinite tickets, but they only have two minutes to uh, do anything. So, Union has a decent amount of guys left. Their respawns are now coming in. Uh, second U.S. is now charging in to this, this corner position. The rest of Union has to charge. I think Union just got a team kill on the second U.S. guy, too. This is going to be a close match. Maybe not. Confederates are now just charging in with their own independent groups here. I don't know. I like the Confederates charging in mass though. Just non-stop. As they uh, just keep dwindling down the Union forces. Um, the Union used to stay on that wall as much as they can. They're kind of loud up behind it. Not really taking as much cover as they can. Don't forget. Give Schumacher yeah, taking some you. shots. Preacher getting shot by Rolo point blank. Yeah, I, I, I think that uh, CSA is going to have this. They've got a lot of people coming in from spawn, and yeah, Union that's on point is occupied. What are we doing up here with artillery? For now. They're in the orchard. They're in the orchard. I don't think they've shot much. I haven't heard the shot go off in a minute. Uh, you might want to... Artillery charge. Charge. Take your Can shots I? and charge. Yeah. One. This IVB one isn't even aimed at any CSA. Union artillery needs a charge. That shot. Uh, I don't think they hit a new one. Uh, Union artillery needs to charge. Yeah, I don't see any bodies around there. One. Shoot them down. <laughs> here comes Union artillery. Overtime will begin here. Um, so overtime is just when the clock hits zero. If the attacker team has more bodies on point than the defenders do at that time, then an overtime will start, and it heavily favors the attackers. Let's see where we have. And that'll do it for this round of Roulette Lane. Corded, your thoughts? I mean, it's a tough time for Union. Um, they pulled back a lot more times than they probably should have because they they didn't really take advantage of people being, of the CSA being kind of spread out. Like you see Rebel Second Corps going through the Orchard a lot, First Big Cav, and they have some skirmishers going through there that I have very limited numbers, and they could have, I think, made the most of that. So yeah, um, only complaint, Confederate should have not capped as early as they did uh, for that last one, but it didn't matter because they won anyway. Union should have charged out uh, right before recrapping the point. That's really my only complaint for them. Maybe going on the orchard is a bad thing too, but yeah. With that being said, we'll see you guys in the second round. That's a lot of casualties. All right, it's 40 minutes. We're starting here on the wonderful Eastwoods map. So... This will be very, very interesting. We'll look at numbers one more time. It's about 75 v 77 in favor of the Union by two guys. First VA Cav switching over. Really balance things overall. So what's the normal CSA strategy for attacking on Eastwoods, Corded? Um, I, yeah, it depends on the group, I guess. Some groups like to split up. Some groups like to go one way. And really is more about just pushing as much as you can. 
through the woods because you're going to have a ticket advantage as a CSA. Um, you don't want to be careful of some of the union moving up to the snake fins like you see here. 24th and 13th. Yeah, they are moving. Like CSA's CSA not putting anyone over there. No. So they're in danger of getting flanked. They are, the, most of the Union team is actually moving over to that flank. You only have a couple Union groups holding by the point. Uh, and speaking of which, let's look at the Union defense. We have IVB in 4th New Jersey holding by point. They're facing the way the 13th and 24th are. Um, so they probably believe they're over here. We see 13th and 24th holding that position. And then in the back over here, we have it, it Rebel 2nd like Corps and the 2nd U.S. They're all facing towards where the 13th and 24th are, yeah. expecting the CSA to go this way. However, the CSA is going all the way over here. And the sucky part about all of it is you don't have a steam chat. you got to send runners. Uh, so that will be terrible for the Union. This might be a quick round. So we have Preacher here on the far right with 1st Via Cav. Uh, Jenkins Brigade in the middle with i Corps in pursuit. Um, to the this left prong here is led by the LFL, and then behind this middle column is the Tombs Brigade. Kind of hopped around those prongs here. There are Confederate guys way back here still. It is the Davis Brigade and the Shenandoah Regulars. They, they don't and see him. No, they don't. That was a terrible volley. Uh, they got, never mind, they got a couple oh, kills, two kills man. at the end, but <laughs> the first couple of shots, that was, oh my goodness. Now they're charging in, they're going to easily wipe them, get some free tickets here off the Confederates. However, because the 13th and 24th moved like this, Confederates are going to have a huge uh, advantage in terms of territory. We see this first Confederate group, the Jenkins Brigade, right. really left moved left far, left. fast. Left. IVB in 4th New Jersey doesn't realize they're there. Oh, they, are right. they, they should just charge. They took their shots. So, Jenkins Brigade will be reloading in cover. Checking back over here. Uh, we have the LFL quick timing it through the woods. Uh, and then behind the Jenkins Brigade, Tombs Brigade, and the 1st VA Cav are engaging with the JDL to their so right. I missed them earlier. Apologies for that. Um, let's see. What are the 13th and the 24th doing over here? They They're haven't... forming up and they're going to start moving towards the, C the behind the CSA. That was a small group. Also, I Might leave a small group to stay back and harass who have come from their spawn, though. That wouldn't be a bad idea. A lot of free out of line and stuff like that. So LFL now moving up quickly behind the IVB in 4th New Jersey and getting a volley off. 4th New Jersey and IVB are getting dwindled down very, very fast. And we can see the 2nd US and Rebel 2nd Corps are moving, but they're moving away from the point towards where the 13th and the 24th are at. So Confederates are about to cap the point here with 36 minutes left. No union is by point. That's fascinating. Actually, don't tell on point. I hope that um, second U.S. and Rebel Second Corps start moving into them. Yeah, they're not going really, to run into any CSA going farther right than they already are. Confederates have such a huge advantage right now because Union is so far spread out. Union needs to be completely wiped, and then they can probably reorganize. But. Oh, <laughs> Sir Knight just asked Victor what's going on, then he got shot. So, yeah, sec second US and the uh, Rebel Second Corps, they, they have the sharps, so they, they gotta shoot. They haven't really been doing much. Yeah, they were waiting for the Confederates to go through the 13th and 24th's original position, but now, realizing they're on point, they have to completely change their plan. Neil, wait for the order. Neil. So, Wait for the order. Looks like they're waiting for the Confederates to get in range. Yeah. LFL does see them though. <laughs> Second US only getting about two kills in that round. So, Rebel Second Corps is moving a little farther right here. We can see 13th and 24th are engaging here with the Tombs 
brigade. Uh, they're actually charging, which I think they should be doing. Ah. Now you charge. Uh, they just wasted their volley. Union's not hitting a lot of shots, though. So a lot of this Confederate force is still here. And now TV is charging straight in to this Union line. They're going to lose, though, because they are highly outnumbered. Um, so Union secures that position, but still a lot of Confederates on the point. The point is being key capped, though, by the second class. Because it looks like we only have i -Corps here on the point. So Jenkins Brigade pushes back the second U.S. We do have a Confederate force coming from spawn. They're a little ways away. You kind of see us two, three groups. You have one on the left side, one in the center, and one really far away in the center. But right now, 24th and 13th are in a bad position. I would say they're caught off from all their other friendlies. We got uh, CSA coming from their spawn. They can just encircle them right now. So they they're all surrounded. They can't really communicate with the with. Their friendlies on the other side. No, they cannot. Let's see here. So. Oh no. I think 13th and the 24th should charge. Um, they definitely I, need to put pressure on these smaller groups. Yeah. Um, Confederates should probably try to charge these groups out as well. So that they aren't fighting on two fronts. I mean, both sides are pinched here. It's funny to look at. LFL moving through the woods here. I don't know if this Union force does see them, but it doesn't even matter because the Jenkins Brigade is charging straight into these Rebel Second Corps guys and wiping them. So the last Union group on this side of the map is the 13th and 24th, and they aren't moving. They're waiting for their officer who just got shot. To scout out for them, but now they won't know anything. They're like, where's our officer? He's dead. But yeah, LFL moving very, very far forward here. I'm surprised that the uh, Confederates have been able to hold the point. Yeah, well, the Union haven't been able to really put a charge together. They're very spread out. They've been defeated in detail. Tenth, uh, LA getting shot at by second US. Second US is continuing to push through. I don't know why the least French Legion um, is falling back. They need to draw both sides' tickets down. Over on this side, 13th and 24th are engaging with this Confederate force, the first VA Cav. So, shots being done over there. Jenkins Brigade is on point. We could see a Union force. The uh, second U.S. beginning to move in to this position to engage the Jenkins Brigade. How far this friendly you are now? They don't know if they're friendlies or not. They are enemy. You can go down to engage. 13th to 24th charging, but first VA Cav is falling back. All right. Adam, Adam, the, uh, what? You're going to be the anchor. Oh. Yes. Union continuing to charge through here. 13th and 24th has the capability to kind of push the CSA that's on point. Open independent. Start hitting them pretty hard. Maybe they can get another one of the Union groups on the other side to push in as well. Get their take us back. Hold. Get behind cover. You, they shouldn't see you. Second, I don't know if second U.S. knows what these are. I think they're not. But they're not shooting. They should conceal themselves. Rebel second core is now moving into the country. Triple is in now. Go, boys. Second U.S. is now moving in with Rebel Second Corps getting basically wiped by that JB volley. JB doesn't have loads. Oh, 
Come here. Why are you running? Why are you running? Oh, supposed to be like second US is able to win that. Um, you, guys are, you guys are done for when I get back. I, let me tell you. I'm dead. Well, I'm going to come back with more men. Damn. With more men, I'm going to come back stronger and more rich than you could ever possibly imagine. <laughs> you, 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 you. That's all right. That's all right. Keep your nerve. Hey, get this officer. I'm not a get the officer. I'm just get a test right man. Here. Get out from the officer. You, took, you, get killed, you killed get my wife. Officer. And I'm here. I'm here for you. I'm going to take back the city. Come here, you chick. There we go. That's freaky. Oh. That took them a while, but they finally got him. Holy cow. So Union's basically able to resecure the point. Uh, there are still Confederates on all sides. Uh, we have the Tombs Brigade, 20th of Georgia there. We have Davis Brigade with the Shenandoah Valley regulars. And then on the far left side, we have the Lee's French Legion approaching again. So, yeah. Um, the SV and the Davis Brigade are slamming into the, the 4th New Jersey right now. Um, they charge in, and they are going to be able to wipe them clean. Uh, counter charge, rather, not charge. Um, a lot of Union Rambos, I don't know if those are Rambos, are trying to return to their line, but they're dying to the least French Legion on the far left. These French legion oh, looks man, like they're no, about no, to be charged by second U.S. I don't know why they're falling back. Uh, but they are falling back. Uh, I don't know why. Maybe they didn't have their loads and they thought they'd get wiped, lose more casualties. I don't know. But regardless. Union has resecured the field. How far out can I go? Oh, my God, it's kind of far out. It's kind of cool to look overlook the rest of the battlefield from this perspective. Good Miller's cornfield, um, Bunker Church, wonderful. Nicodemus yeah, is all very nice to see the actual scale of the battlefield. Oh yeah. Where is? Oh, there's the turnpike. I was like, the turnpike should be right here, but... Mm -hmm. uh, Union moving back out to what appears to be their original positions. Tombs Brigade is now falling back. They're probably trying to avoid casualties. Um, they do take one from that Union volley, though. But, yeah, Confederates are reforming on the right they have a prong on the left i don't know where this group on this fence over here is going um it looks like they're going to be going right but this will be interesting to see it looks like we're going to have our first engagement over on this side of the map uh the side on the right is going to be engaged soon at least french legion is about to be point blank shot at by rebel second corps now, now they've seen each other these French Legion missing a lot of shots, both sides that engaged. Second US already went, went away from them. Now they hear the shots and they're going back to help. Second the US Lico. now engaging with the Lee's French Legion. I think Lee's French Legion is going to come on top there. Um, on the other side, the sides are getting closer. I just really wanted to see if anything had happened over there. Um, but yeah, Lee's French Legion is able to secure the dub. Um, we have a second U.S. soldier here. He's, what the heck is that animation? He's spam, like reloading and crouching at the same time. Uh, he's, uh, no, he's falling too. Huh. He's reloading and falling. Interesting. So, at least French Legion survives. The the funny part about these battles is if a charge happens and the flag bearer starts to run away <laughs> too early, and their side wins and they lose that flag bearer for a while, I find that hilarious. Uh, I think that's what happened to the Lee French Legion. Jenkins Brigade trying to outflank the Union here um, while their friendlies are still holding there. 
in the back. Help west, west, keep quiet. Oh, Jane's brigade is going for a surprise attack here. Union not realizing they're there yet. They don't know. They're getting some nice shots. Union now reacting. It was a bad time for 24th to move out. I can't yeah. help. However, I think they'll be able to hold at least the Jenkins Brigade charge. Another charge, not really. The Toons Brigade is coming up to volley. A nice oh volley Lord, here. I'm grabbing that flag. flag um, beautiful time by Rubble Second Corps. And yeah, the 24th did move out at a bad time. The 13th did get wiped uh, in the end by Rebel Second Corps. JDL's holding here. I don't know why they aren't picking up the flag that's right behind them. Um, even if it's not their group, they could be getting spawns there, which would be huge. Uh, it's probably 2nd US or Rebel 2nd Corps over here. We're getting close to the French Legion. I guess the 2nd US? Yep. Actually, it's both groups. It's both groups. Holding here, at least French Legion in the distance. Let's set that. But you serve your decor. Oh, where? Yeah, what's going on? Titi is there, Titi is there, all of them? Uh, I don't think so. We have an effective reduction. Ah, that's right. But, yeah, I like what the Confederates are doing so far. We are 15 minutes into the fighting portion of this round. Nothing too much is happening, though, um, right now. You see second U.S. starting to push in. They really realize there's two U.S. Yeah. in front of them. Both out, and then... So the DB can push up and help them. Second U.S. LFL. Like I said, beginning the fight here on this side. JDL a moment ago charged and then screened them moment they saw him and fell back. Rebel second corps moving in to assist the second U.S. Mostly like a shootout over here. Second U.S. has the sharps, so they could come out on top of it. They can keep them at distance. That's true, they'll get a lot more shots off. Per, per minute as well. Take a look at the left side. There's a lot of space between the CSA and the Union. Southeast. Southeast. Right. Yeah, uh, I think Confederates are just reforming here before pushing back in. They do have a decent amount of guys over here, though. Couldn't hey, move in soon. But let's shift back over here on the left. I think these French Legion pulled back. Really far back. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah, pull back to the, the snake fence. This creature's group's going up. This first be a cast. Indeed. I'm a dragon on a dime. I'm a cossack on the run. I'm a horse with a tummy through the room. Hey, 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 hey. Second US is still pushing up. They're getting closer and closer. Same with second gore. Oh, why are they pushing so far forward? Yeah, they're gonna get really outnumbered. Okay. Alpha could okay. charge. Uh, Rebel Second Corps is also up here. I don't know if they could charge, but I think they should. They gotta continue being aggressive here. More even fights happening on the right flank here. This Union Force, who is it? IVB is moving really far forward. Jenkins Brigade is getting a shot. Both sides getting shots. IVB missed a lot of those shots. It's going to allow the Jenkins Brigade to get close here. Jenkins Brigade now charging in with more friendlies on the left side here. The Jenkins Brigade, we could see Union moving behind this Confederate charge. Um, and now they're taking shots into this charge. Fucking 
Those Union shots are not hitting much either. A lot of shots missing here. And now the 24th and the 13th are now charging in to clear this Confederate force. They got to be close to taking losses. I think they will. Because there's been a lot of melee for a while, and it's kind of surprising. So, back on this other side. So, CSA does go up. Yep, there's taking losses. I'm not surprised. So, yeah, second US is still engaging with the French Legion, SD, DD, and the first VA Cav. All these Confederates could charge those guys out if they wanted to. Like, at least French Legion will. Let's see if. Let's go. Yeah, we there's like a few people over here. These French legions are actually listening to this live. Uh, I said charge and they charge. <laughs> uh huh. No. Um, I, uh, it's unfortunate that they charged in by themselves. Uh, now we can see that the SV and the DB are now charging in. Um, but they will wipe the second US, or at least the majority of the second US. You can see second US falling back. Um, first VA cab did not charge in there, they held back. Can see on this right side a couple of Confederate Rambos. Ramboing. I oh, don't know if it's JDL. Yeah. I apologize. Um, JDL taking shot. There actually got some hits there. Your flag went down. Um, you can see Union officer trying to figure out what the heck that was. But JDL keeping up some pressure. The unfortunate part is they're going to be skirmishing and not align deaths. So this Confederate left prong is reforming altogether. Now and forever. I'm intrigued to see when they will push in. The hard part for the attack, I guess this map is just very hard for these type of events. Um, especially, yeah, because yeah, no steam chat. Especially chats. when you're attackers. Yeah, it's. Because you can't make a concerted push, and then defenders are typically going to be closer together. Yeah, that too. Like, we can see first VA Cav charging in here. I don't know if they told their friendlies that they're pushing forward, but, like, for all we know, they didn't tell anyone. They're going forward. They probably did, though. Oh, to the left, hope. to the left, to the but, left. To the left. Oh, fuck my tits. Shoot them, please. Nothing that comes up with these events uh, as that offenders is you'll have default positions. So, yeah, when everything calms down, uh, the defending team knows generally where the rest of the team is going to be in relation to them. Exactly. So, but it's not like the Confederates are doing a bad job, though. It's just very difficult. I mean, they're ahead on tickets right now. There's still 24 minutes left, plenty of time to knock them to breaking. And I assume when we see the Union hit breaking, which will probably be by 18 minutes, um, we'll see them collide on point. Yeah, that's right. oh, Confederates shit. massing up on the right. Uh, Toons Brigade looks like they were going to charge, but they pulled off. Jenkins Brigade is now charging. They just transferred their charging energies over. Jenkins Brigade charging in here. And I think Toons Brigade is now charging in with the JDL. Uh, Toons Brigade is not charging yet. They're not good yet. They're still Union from 13th. The Rebel Second Corps. Confederate taking, taking losses here, but Toons Brigade now charging in, and that'll secure the right for the Confederates. So, the only really Union left here is the guys on point before those guys who just died respawn. We could see Lee's French Legion, DB, and SV. Maybe just Lee's French Legion who's sitting back here. The DB and SP are sitting back here. But LFL is moving closer and closer to the point at the quick time. These guys got a good opportunity to, to push that point. They've got two sides under control. I would agree. Coordination will be difficult, but yeah, exactly. They'd have an opportunity. Unless they're sending runners, they don't know that the other side, that the south side of the CSA is still up. Exactly. It doesn't look like they have any runners, um, but 
that's probably a, a part in contributing to when they fall back for a charge. They get, yeah, because they might be like, oh, our friendlies on the other side might be dead. I don't want to die here and then us reform at main and all that. So I don't know. But, anyways. LFL pushing forward. It, they said something that sounded like charge. I don't know French. I wish I did. Definitely moving in. They are. They have really nice shots on the Union here. A decent amount of those shots hit. Decent you to see some respawners coming in from the Union. 24 charges coming in. Might get behind this CSHR rappel. Oh no. I core is about to be flanked by 24. Mm -hmm. I don't see him. No. There's only a few of them there. And they aren't even talking either. Beautiful double stab there by the 24th, those two guys there. Now 24th is just charging right into the LFL. I don't know why LFL is backing off those positions. Um, maybe they're just trying to conserve their men on this side. But you need to be aggressive as the attackers. You need Might to be. They're about to get surrounded by it. Looks like all the Union. <laughs> now they are. Oh no. Uh, yeah, the sec second US is... And Rebel Second Corps can get in their way. These French are really charging into the second US. At least they are charging. I like it. They're they're probably going to lose that flag, though. Now the flag goes down. Too much of the CSA is on the south side. But none of them are, in there, are close enough to help. They are close enough to help, but they probably don't know what's happening up there. Yeah, JTL moving to the far east. Fortunate though that they are only a five man group. What the heck is that noise? See someone eating. <laughs> I'm intrigued. But it looks like shots are really being engaged between that Union point. Uh, guys on point in this tiny Confederate force. You can see DB and SV still really far up in the northwest side of this battlefield. Um, so yeah, Union standing around point, getting prepared for when they hit breaking. Making sure the Confederates can't take it quickly. A lot of the Confederates moving up here on the right. We have the TB in the back and the JB in front reinforcing the JDL's position here. Oh, oh, so, Confederates strategizing TB, I think, is about to run. No, TB is still holding a little back there. Um, it's like DB and SB are mostly just hanging out on that, that other side of the field. What are they doing? I don't know if they're trying to pick off respawns. I would think they'd be closer, though. I wonder if they uh, follow whoever the officer is for that group. Um, I, because they seem to be acting together the whole time. Which is probably what's happening. A charge is happening, though. Um, what the Confederates need to do. It's kind of spread out. Looks like Confederates are at least winning in this shot. There's a lot of Union then over here. Um... JDL needs to go on as well. We're holding back. So Union hitting breaking. IVB and Fourth New Jersey need to both charge. If they're if they're yeah, going in for melee, they all need to go in. They can't do this because then the Confederates can defeat them in detail. And even if they don't defeat them, uh, they will get skirmished and online deaths. Yeah, so you just need to start pushing in. DB is in a good position to have that last flank and to completely encircle the Union on point. Exactly. The JDL. The JDL is still out here. So, yeah. Oh, I actually hit breaking a little later than what I originally thought. 18 minutes. Oh, yeah. So, I think Union is going to hit last stand if they Confederates don't cap in time. Um... However, 
Confederates are kind of really split up. We saw DB and SV up there. There are some survivors up there for the Confederates. We have LFL and the 1st VA Cav now moving forward. We saw them get wiped a couple minutes ago, but look how far away the guys who just died are. They're going to be out of the fight for quite some time. Yeah, at least three or four minutes. So, LFL is now moving in. I don't know if they're coordinating with the first VA cab, but they are moving towards a point, which is important. Well, I think I see them uh, on the first line. Well, first VA cab is going to begin shooting. They don't have much cover, though. They do have the trees to blind them. SV and DV are still moving forward here. Enemy on the left, on the is coming in to reinforce the point. SV pulled forward, saw them, the officer retreated, and now the DB is following them. They're probing. That's what you cannot do on this, unfortunately. It's like second US and second core trying to hold down the east side. Depending, CSA from taking that push that they did before. So, yeah, you can see them moving the really far out here. Uh, you have 13th and 24th, 4th New Jersey holding here. Now he's probably in the mix. The 13th is charging into the first VA camp. I don't know why they're charging. Are they trying to go in the last stand? They're so spread out too. They, both Union trying to pinch on both sides here. DB and SV mostly have been out of, out of the fight. They haven't been, it doesn't look like they've been able to shoot. I wonder if they have to listen to the officer, because um, they've been following the officer most of the time, so. Maybe it's under the control of SV this round, but a lot of melee happening over here. All these out of line and skirmishing are going to favor the Union, or the Confederates, sorry. <laughs> Not the Union. Right here, 13 right here. So. There's not many respawns coming from point. I mean, coming from uh, you can spawn. So, AP and SP don't really have to worry about what's behind them. No, they don't, but they don't know that. Uh, so. Which is the uh, difference in perspectives that you see. Um, right now, Tombs Brigade, they're on point. And so is Tingus Brigade, is also on point as well. They're actually camping right now. So they're going to have to force IVB and North New Jersey to actually charge. Which will be very good for the Confederates. Lost their entire line. Get the flag up. Pick up the flag. IVB now going up and over. Got to get to the point. Moving in. Fourth New Jersey. Got to do it now. Is still holding Third back. They're probably getting their bandits to reload. Rebel Second Corps is now pushing in as well. IVB is getting slaughtered in the wild. Potato Stoop still in it though, he goes down. Um, Rebel Second Corps engaging, 24th and 13th without pushing it as well. It's just more than just 24th, there's the 13th. That point was being very close. If the DB and SV were up in here, that couldn't, that would have been a huge difference. Um, fourth New Jersey, second US now charging in and they're gonna successfully wipe them off the point. And that will cause the Confederates to go to breaking, that doesn't really mean much though. The unfortunate part for the Confederates, though, is they all keep dying a decent time between each other. So we have this Confederate wave of LFL um, moving in. Uh, but they're going to be so far away from the guys that just died. JDL still holding on there. I'm surprised JDL has survived for this long. They've done well. Um, Mostly stuck to shooting, so not, they haven't put themselves in much danger. That is true. That is very, very. They do true. pull a lot of the union to where they where they go. So, well, the union is going to hit last stand within the next four minutes. Is my guess. Uh, union the Confederates have a small force moving forward. I Corps. Oh, there they are. See you. Pushing in. Yeah. I 
Oh, he's just standing on top of one of their flags. Shoot him, boy, shoot. I don't know why they pick it up. Through the Union or CSA? CSA. Ow. <laughs> They're literally sitting on it. Maybe it's not their flag. I mean, even then, though, right? You should still pick it up, I think. So Confederate groups moving out. The LFL is waiting. I wonder if they're waiting for their respawns to get into the action. We do see the Cav moving up on the left here with SB and DB inching forward here. Will they get into the battle? Let's see where Jenkins and Dunes Brigade decide to go. They've got a decent amount of people coming from the respawn. At least now the Confederates are going to be bunched up. Uh, Union actually pushing out against the DB and the SV. But Union is just charging up here. Uh, it's actually the second US. Preacher and the first VA Cav is joining this, this Confederate force. Union being last stand. Not surprising at all. So, for those of you who don't know, for last stand, if you die before it, you will get a respawn, but if you die afterward, you uh, can no longer respawn for the defenders. I don't know why SV and DB aren't charging in here. They're kind of sitting back, letting the Rebel Second Corps and Second US get shots off on them. Yeah, they've got the sharps, so they're putting themselves at a disadvantage by not charging. Jenkins Brigade charging into point here, which I assume the Toons Brigade now is moving in to assist. All these Union guys that die no longer respawn here. Point is still in the favor of Union. Union still has more bodies on point. However, I don't know if Union's going to be able to win this charge. I don't know. It's close. If the DB pushes in right now, Confederates can secure the point. Sure, I don't think they have the numbers for that. Looks like they're gonna run into it's like an IVB. Yeah. Like these French legions put a shing to the point. They're gonna be going after looks like 24th and 13th. Get the numbers on them. The least French Legion wiping that group. IVB needs to move in on point now. Yep, IVB is the only other group, and they're going away from point, it looks no. like. No, oh, they might be going to point. They're getting their lows first. If they have time to. Yeah, they do. Um, they're very, very outnumbered, though. Yep, and CSA does have that flag on point, so they're just going to keep getting numbers up. Yeah. Let's go over here. Gentlemen. This will be our last charge. We might be the last of our team. You are. So please, are I expect last, full gun three and splendor of all of you. Now to the point. <coughs> Let, let's say the union. Charge in. Babla! Babla! Babla, baby! You might need to be quiet and not yell out. Because <laughs> trying to be sneaky here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so they might have should have spread out a bit more since they're on last stand. I mean, he does have a drama. He have a drama. Looks like they're winning. They won that charge. No Very way. Good, but uh, but uh, here comes the rest of the CSA. Fourth New Jersey guys charged in too, so that was well timed there. Did, 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 we, did you win? Uh oh. What the fuck? Yeah, here comes the rest oh, of the CSA. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. That did it. Corded, your thoughts for the round? Again, it's tough for Union on this map. Um, they did. They lasted a pretty good while, though. Um, hmm. it's, it's, a tough, it's a tough one with these rules not being able to talk to each other. I think the Union did play well, though. Um, CSA just naturally is going to have more tickets, and 
or the lack of cons, they're forcing each other to, to go one on one. And with the ticket disadvantage that the Union has, they they just can't fight like that, and it's hard not to, and under those conditions. Yeah, um, Union did a fine job. It, it really sucked that they got out positioned at the beginning. The Confederates went where they weren't expecting it, but other than that, it was a good, fun match that to watch. Uh, and with that being said, we'll see you guys in the post game interview. Here is the post-game interview for the European Historical Rules event. We had two rounds on Roulette Lane in Eastwoods. CSA was able to win both of those rounds in a very cool and fun way. It was very entertaining to watch. We have a bunch of leaders from those events uh, or those rounds today. So we're going to be asking them questions of strategy and more. With that being said, let us introduce our people today. From the CSA team today, we have Schumacher. Yeah, hello. I'm Captain from GP both Russian and English speaking unit. Thank you. Next, we have Atlantic. What's going on, uh, ladies and gentlemen? Oh, there's, there's no women here. What's going on, boys? Uh, <laughs> first VA Cav, first Sergeant. I, uh, I'll represent the boys today. Thank you. And last but not least, from the CSA, we have Ta Gray Major. Assume that's Major. Oh, yes, sir. Senador Valley is SV Regulars. All right, thank you. And then representing the USA team today, we have Matt Cawthon. Thanks, guys, for having me. 13th Georgia, First Lieutenant Matt Cawthon. And then your announcer team for today was myself as Guardian Eagle with Corden. I'm Corden, Captain of Delta Company, 6th Louisiana, part of 2nd Corps. All right, I appreciate you all introducing yourself. So we're going to talk about the first round, Roulette Lane. CSA is attacking so what was the CSA strategy going into that round, and how did you guys react to the ever-changing battlefield? Yeah, original plan was developed a long time ago. So we had the main force grouping out at the barn, and then after we saw the Stonewall is fought with the Yankees, we just needed to wait until the 35 minutes, and then all together charge this corner of the, snow, of the Stonewall and Snake fence. So, and... The second part of the CSA team, which was DB, SV, and GTL, was heading towards the uh, house right on the point. So they were more likely a uh, destruction force. So the Yankees will not mess up in one place to hold out big charge. Uh, yeah, so basically just charge the stone wall every five minutes. That was our basic plan for this match. Cool. Uh, Tagre or Atlantic for the few moments you were on CSA. For those of you who don't know, first VA Cav was on USA originally, and then a little halfway through the round, they uh, switched to CSA for balancing. So. No, uh, we switched because the, the CSA were going to win. <laughs> nah, we're, we're playing. We saw the uh, the inequality in numbers when we were Union, so we were like, ah, oh, just got to switch over and made it fairly equal. But, uh, we had two separate strategies going in. So th when we were Union, we were like, oh, there's like five of us. So we got to hold the guns at all costs. Uh, and then once we split the CSA, we just attack, aggression. You know, did no quarter to the enemy, man. We just fucking kill him, get in there. There's just nothing really to it. Tagre, any thoughts for the first round? Oh, it was fun. We won. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, now let's move to the USA perspective. Atlantic, if there's anything else you want to add on to this, you can for first VA. But what was Union strategy going into the round, and how did you guys react to the ever-changing battlefield? So basically, 24th and 13th Georgia's job was to hold that uh, um, snake fence up by cannons, hold it at on cost, and keep that corner. That was our job. Uh, we had some great charges. Uh, there was a lot of fun that we had. A lot of a lot of charges won, but yeah, and uh, it seemed like CSA was very very conservative at first. They they stayed back, did their thing, and it, it ended up being good in the end. So, uh, but uh, yeah, that was basically our plan: hold the guns, like like Atlantic said earlier, hold the hold the guns at all costs. So, um, that was pretty much our plan. Yeah, um, like I said, an office coordination, uh, Georgia did well. And uh, how they, what I saw, 
the union guys perform. Yes. A question I did have for the union. Um, so you guys retook the point with like two minutes left in a counterattack when it was, I think, breaking, breaking. Did you guys consider charging out towards the CSA, like by the barn where they were at, to try to knock them the last stand? We did. Uh, actually, Rolo actually took us out before uh, a little bit before we started taking point. And uh, we, I think what Rolo saw was there's more men than we thought we could take. And so he pulled us back. And uh, I don't know. Uh, it's, I'm, gonna, I'm interested to see what what the perspective was up top. But uh, yes, we did kind of consider that, and then we pulled back, thinking there was more men than that. So, all right, um, Corey, correct me if I'm wrong. I think Union had more, at least bunched up on point. Am I right in that? Or... Um, for when Thirteenth charged out. The no, barn? so right, so two minutes left in that counterattack, right? It was breaking, breaking. Union stayed on point and recapped it instead of charging out yes, the CSA. We did. Okay. So and what Matt was saying, um, from what I could see, Rolo wouldn't have been able to see um, the rest of the CSA that was there, and what he would have been able to see is like five guys on that stone wall. Uh, maybe he just heard them like talking on the other side of the barn. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm. I'm really interested. So there's only a couple guys. So okay. Yeah, we did not see that. But yeah, um, I think the union should have at least tried to get him to last stand. There was a lot of people in that orchard that were coming from respawn. That would have been a lot of easy tickets that you could have taken. Hmm. Yeah, we did discuss something like that on point, and uh, the consensus was that we were going to hold point at the end. Uh, there was a lot of different. Uh, sayings here there and everywhere trying to figure it out and in the end we just took points and that reminded me of another question so csa i think it was the second time they capped the point usa hit breaking like a minute after they capped it did you guys mean mm -hmm. to cap that uh it always happened to an accident because uh i want to give us a clarification the for the charge at the corner of the stone wall and snake fence was JB, TB, LFL, and ICOR. So most of the time, Frenchies are the biggest unit from all of us. They just keep charging and charging. They cannot stop. That's why they stood on point and always capturing it. <laughs> that, uh, that's why it always happens. Ah, I see. It ended up working in the end anyways. So there's that. Yeah. Uh, we'll move on to the second round, Eastwood. CSA was attacking. They did win. So we'll start with them. CSA, what was your strategy for Eastwood, and how did you react to the ever-changing battlefield? Yeah, I tried to make some kind of uh, front line in this round. We had on the far left flank, where the cornfield had uh, three, two units, or three, yeah. JDL, DB, and SV, they were like a skirmishing force, just to distract some Union regiments. Uh, LFL and i should go on the yeah, they were on point, trying to do something in the middle of the point, and might be captured. And J JB and TB was on the far right side, trying to kill some Yankees on the road and in the middle around the point. That was the basic plan for all of us. And also we had a 25 minute marker, that if we cannot like break them too much, we will capture the point, but that really didn't work out because we made some taking losses by that time so that was no need in such capturing makes sense any other confederates have thoughts for the second round yeah i'll uh jump in uh so wholeheartedly i believe when it comes to woods there's no such thing as strategy i think uh <laughs> you just find the enemy you kill him i agree it's it's because you can't like no no plan really survives initial contact. The cav, you know, we we have all this shit set up, but at the end of the day, we're just we're pushing into the woods. We're finding the enemy. We're firing. We're charging. It's just nothing really special to it. And uh, happy it did work out in the end. All right, cool. Um, I guess we'll move on to Union. Matt Cawthon, what was the USA strategy from your perspective for defending the Eastwoods, and how did you guys react to the ever-changing battlefield? So, yeah, again, uh, 
thirteenth and twenty four were together as as usual. Uh, we were we came down that right side at first. Our job was to hold the left though, but our thoughts was to come around on the back. So we held that snake rail for a minute, saw them where they were going. We were able to actually hit them in the back and uh, keep moving. I think at the end we ended up getting wiped after the second or third unit. I can't remember. But uh, that was our job was we were a skirmishing force, a, a fairly big skirmishing force on, on the left side, and we were to hold the left side. So um, I can't remember who's on right. I believe it was fourth and... Uh, one other, but anyways, that was their job. Um, yeah, like 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 JB and and everybody said, it's it's hard in the woods uh, to keep a strategy and keep it going. But I think we all work together as as the, as a uh, as a union, and uh, we actually had a lot of runners coming back and forth, telling us what was going on. That was that was really good for us. Uh, kept us moving and doing what we needed to do. So that was our strategy. All right. Thank you. Only question I had was for um, Tagre. I saw you guys. You guys were with Davis Brigade a lot on the left yes, side of the map. It seemed that you guys, at least from when I was watching you guys, you would go up, you would see Union, and then fall back. I don't know if that's because you guys thought you were outnumbered or what, but what was the thought process? Or am I not seeing you guys enough? Actually, we were looking for them, so I suppose I just didn't see them. I had one of my guys go out and scout and uh, come back and tell us what he saw. So we were looking for him. I guess I just was blind to see him. Uh, probably from your helicopter view, you don't see the slope of the ground. So we had some hills there too. That's a fair point. Or you may not immediately. Yeah. So that's the deal. So yeah, I was I was afraid I was giving my ga guys, our, I mean, our, our uh, DB Russian guys uh, uh, like a bad experience because we weren't shooting anything. and. I thought, gee, you know, where are they? <laughs> so that was so funny. I said, I thought, you know, just screw it. Let's, we'll go to the, I thought to myself, we'll go to the other side and get some action. And, but it, the, the round closed not too long after that. And uh, somehow we won. <laughs> I, I'm sure I got to give credit to the Cav, I'm sure, for that, because the way they move around, you know, that's the way to do it. All right. Thank you. Uh, Corded, did you have any questions? Um, I was, I was out for a little bit, but, um, I just want to add like the hard part about, uh, East was for union, especially with the rules of not being able to communicate like steam chat and stuff. Um, is that you can't really go one-on-one -on -one with the CSA, uh, because of the ticket disadvantage. So you kind of have to wait for them to like come to you and then hopefully they don't see you and then you have to like kind of work it around them and it's super difficult especially trying to have runners do all that and they have to come back and find you it's crazy all right thank you uh any other questions or any other comments that anyone wants to make yeah i had to say that uh it was a great time especially uh shout out to rollo who was unable to be here yeah he brought us behind uh, Togger at one point in time. That was that was funny. I was literally just stabbing the guys in the back, and they were like, "What? What?" And one, I ended <laughs> up dying at the end. But that that was a great charge. The same with same with running into uh, first VA calf. We hit him on the side, and their uh, preacher running around. Oh no! Uh, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's for but, sure. You the thirteenth. Uh, they walked us completely, and uh, at that toward the beginning of the map, and after that, I thought. This 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 is this I've had enough of this so, <laughs> but we yeah. didn't see much action after that so good charge on your guys' part for sure. Oh uh, yeah, thanks. Good 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 job, uh, CSA. That's all I have to say. Good job, good win. I didn't know I was thirteen. That was a really good charge. Like we were behind that tree and some guy screaming behind us, behind us. And yeah. I'm just start sprinting, preacher to sprinting, and there's like four guys chasing preacher down. I think I, I like, killed like one of them. I die and I hear preacher turn around and come back. I'm coming back for my wife. Yeah, tits killed her. I love them tits. And then, and then, then, like, so we're like, oh, preacher, you know what the fuck you just did. Don't do that. It was, it's all around. It was a fun time. It was a really good charge, though. All right, sweet.
I appreciate y'all being here. All the socials of everyone in this post game interview will be in the description if they want one there. All the regiments that participated will also be in the description below. A link to their discords. Join one of them. Lots of fun. Also, the European Historical Rules event discord will be in there as well if you want your regiment to join this awesome event. And with that being said, please like, comment, share, subscribe for more. Join our discord. We need more frontline reporters and announcers like Corden. I really appreciate him being here. And yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good night.